What's up guys, Phoenix here. This video is going to be another one of those pesky little Dyke Doctor videos that I seem to have been doing a lot of as of late, and will probably continue to keep doing in the future, because, let's be honest, it's a very, very well-received thing in terms of things I've been doing as of late, in terms of, like, new content and things like that. You guys really like it, you really wanted me to do it, and you really like it, and... So, if that continues to be the case, I will continue to continue. Continuing. Yes. But... This video is going to be on the Ignite deck that I've played in the last two uh, Dev Pro Duel videos that I can't remember the name of the person that sent it in off the top of my head, but I'll leave it somewhere in the video. Uh, but it was sent in through Facebook, so again, if you want to suggest a deck for me to do for one of these Deck Doctor segments, and it's not a deck that I've already played before for one of these, send it to the uh, Facebook link in the description to my Facebook fan page. Send it as a message there, and I will take a look at it, and if it's something that I'm interested in, taking on I will definitely do so I might at least play it for a game or so but more than likely if I even play it at all it's going to be for one of these little deck doctor mini series things just you know as a side note but anyway ignites was actually something I kinda wanted to stay away from but it's not because of the deck itself I've been very clear in the past that I don't like the ignite deck in terms of a playable deck but that's not to say that I don't appreciate the archetype for what it is. I actually really like the archetype in terms of its card design because it was one of Konami's original experimental attempts at making the pendulum mechanic good but not overpowered and for some reason like they had all these different ideas that they were trying to implement time after time after time and kind of get you know stage it out into a way where it could like function properly but not just be game breaking because they had to be very careful with that shit and one of their, you know, responses along the way to this problem that they had with the pendulum mechanics development was to just solve the problem of getting your pendulum monsters in circulation, but fix the problem of them being potentially overpowered by making them all effectless. And that is what the Ignite deck ended up being. It was, in my mind, a success in terms of what they saw that they could do to jumpstart the pendulum mechanic forward. But in terms of a competitive deck, it basically never really got a time to shine. If it had come out at the very beginning of the Pendulum era, like, we're talking like if this was like the first set of Pendulum cards that was ever released, like mid-summer 2014, like if this had come out in Duelist Alliance, then this could have possibly been a potential contender, you know, because we were in a slower format then. The game was a lot different from it is from how it is now in terms of what made decks considerably playable and we also had triple soul charge so you could throw these things into exceeds and just like soul charge them back like that would have been in my mind really good but I've rambled for a long time this is probably going to be a very long deck doctor video so definitely strap yourselves in for this one if you're interested because this is going to be the first one that I'm doing where I'm actually basically changing the entire dynamic of the deck itself this is probably going to be the deck doctor that I make the most changes on for you know at least so far, because this is only the third one, it's very easy to say from that, but maybe even well into the future, because basically, the entire axis of how this deck operates is about to be changed for the better, because this had a very solid idea moving for it. It was a very, very decent starting point, very decent idea, and the idea of this original build that was sent in to me was to use the Ignites to fuel the extra deck very quickly and set up a scale, and then also to be able to use Luster Pendulum and use that as a five scale that also just does nothing but fuel your extra deck more and you can also you know use it as pendulum status to get into ignister neat idea right the problem is, is that the deck lacks in areas because of the way that it's trying to be played the issue with luster is that if you put it in your pendulum scale it's a five meaning that you can put one of the two scale ignis, uh, ignites into your pendulum scale and pendulum from three and four which is not a problem that's what you're trying to do with the deck you can only pendulum for three to four but that's everything in your monster lineup that's the point but if you end up putting one of the sevens there with you know luster if you have luster in your scale then you can only pendulum sixes and that is where basically the deck gets bottlenecked now that's not to say that we're cutting luster i'm actually leaving that entire package in but it's going to be used in a slightly different mythology mythology I'm trying to enunciate. I've had a very long and very stressful day. But, regardless, first changes that we are going to make is that we are going to drop the level 3s. Now, I understand why they were there, but they're honestly like the worst of the Ignites. 
and basically they just they've got to go and with the three star ignites being cut we can cut the soul rank three in the extra deck this this entire thing is about to be uh, be changed and blown blown open in an eye-opening way now what we're gonna do is that we're going to up the ignite count from uh, 12 to around 16 and we're going to use that and we're gonna utilize the level fives and level sixes for that because overall the exceeds pool that you can get into with those is better than what you can get into with you know just you know having the threes scattered in there but also the fact that like Sure, it makes it to where you can't reliably put Luster Pendulum in your scale. In fact, you actually never want to put Luster Pendulum in your scale with this deck now. Um, the way that it's going to be made. Because of the fact that, like, you're going to keep, um, like, Luster Pendulum in circulation as a tuner. That's its most valuable asset to you in its form going forward. Your Ignites, you want to preserve your Ignite scales because your Ignite scales are very broad and sweeping. And it allows you to get a lot of different you know, plays and advantage moving from that. But anyway, uh, all that talking that I'm doing is going to make a lot more sense when I start moving some cards around. So I'm going to put in the uh, sixes that I want. I'm going to reduce the numbers here in a second. I'm just putting the ones in that I know that I want. But I'm going to reduce the numbers. Now it's going to be um, three of each six, but it's actually I'm going to be cutting one for a reason that I'll explain later. But... As for the fives, it's going to be uh, two of each five, um, because these cards, the fives don't have nearly as much utility as the sixes do in terms of the cards that you're going to be accessing in your Xyz pool. Um, now, of course, the fours have the most utility, but the threes had literally the least utility, and that's why they're getting cut. Um, we're basically going to be adding these cards in, and then we're just going to start cutting cards where we uh, see fit. This is going to be a very long deck doctor I'm I'd be very surprised if this gets runs in under 20 minutes especially since we're already at seven um, because I did all my explaining but um, with these we are going to cut one of the sixes so two gallants triple Uzi two Margrave and two uh, Derringer or as they're called in the TG, Cavalier Margrave veteran it, they turned Uzi into veteran excuse me um, and then that's still gallant okay so two of them are the same and two of them got changed what okay um, but, moving on to different changes. The uh, first change is these MSTs. I'm going to make room in the side deck for these, because normally I have room here, but I'm just going to um, make room um, by taking out the cards that I know aren't in here. Um, basically, I'm also going to be building a side deck for this, strangely enough, because there was a side deck provided. Um, and since this is a deck that you could technically like play competitively, um, if you wanted to, like this is a deck that I would actually... like play at a locals or maybe even a regional if I was feeling a bit cheeky um, but other than that uh, so other than that like that's why I didn't do side decks for the other ones because they were just pretty much casual corner but this is actually has the potential to be a you know semi competitive deck but anyway moving on the uh, MSTs are being moved from the main to the side because there's no reason to main them because you should be blinding first with this deck anyway and if you're blinding first with this deck, you want your deck to be entirely combo cards, and then, you know, cards that are going to prevent your opponent from playing, i.e. Tyrant's Throws, things like that. Um, Tyrant's Throws is one hell of a card. If you haven't read it, you probably should. Um, this card is literally the reason why you play this deck, and it is kind of the crutch and backbone of why you're able to do the things you're able to do with this deck in the method that you want to get them moving. But, anyway, moving on, cards that are going to be added. Uh, Royal Magical Library. There is absolutely no reason not to be playing this card, even if you're not playing um, this specific build of Ignites. Even if you're just trying to modify the old build, the original build with the threes in it, um, there's no reason not to be playing this card. This card is literally the best combo card in your deck. This card turns all of your minusing with the Ignite cards into actual tangible pluses. Like, you're literally just one for one your way through cards. You're gaining like marginal pluses through popping with ignites, but then when you set your scale up, you pendle on them out, and like you, you usually net at least one or two cards back. But once you throw Royal Magical Library into the mix, like all these cards just start generating pluses, and they start digging you into more combo pieces, making your first turn plays more extensive. And then they also just start digging you into your floodgate tyrants throws it starts digging you into so many cards it's absolutely insane there's no reason for you to not be playing this card 100 percent no reason um but 
Next cut is Ignition Phoenix is getting cut to two. Now this card is very odd in that you can um, draw multiples of it and it'd be good simply because of the way that the Ignite deck works because it's not once per turn. You can just play a new one over, you can pop another card, get a new Ignite, play it, and then whatever card you popped, you just Pendulum Summoning. So it basically one for ones your way into more combo pieces. But you still just never really want to see two because like you could just have different cards at that point. I mean, that's a terrible argument to make, but I mean, it's actually just the case, especially with a deck like this. You could just have a, any other card, and it would probably be just as good, if not better, so that is why it's getting swapped for another chicken game. You never want to see two of the Phoenix, and so you never really want to see two chicken games either, but you would love to see chicken game plus terraforming, or all three terraformings, or Phoenix plus terraforming. There's all of these things that, like, all these different combinations that you want to see and the only ones that you actually want to see multiples of are terraforming. You never want to see multiples of Phoenix or Chicken Game with neither, with like none of the other one in your hand as well. Like if you open two Chicken Game, that's going to actually suck. Unless you have like Royal Magical Library to like try and dig your way into Phoenix because you're going to be giving your opponent potential pluses on their turn as well. You want to always play Chicken Game that play Phoenix over it. So you want to see one of each of them at least. And this ratio is just kind of the best that I've found in the business for doing that sort of thing with field spells but carrying on the very next card that's actually getting cut strangely enough is upstart goblin um royal magical library gets draws chicken game gets draws you'd think that upstart goblin would just be something that you just automatically include in the deck uh, but it's actually just not um when you consider the fact that this deck is now playing all of the um all of the fives and sixes upstart goblin trying to draw a random card at this point what are you trying to draw into? This deck is like 35 combo pieces. Or less than that, but it's still like 30 something combo pieces. And then all the other cards, three of them are floodgates. And then all of the other cards are literally draw cards getting you into these combo pieces. Instead of playing more draw cards like that, why not just play more combo pieces? And at this point, that's Summoner's Art. And IE, basically, it's essentially the exact same thing, only it has better interactions with you having any ignite it's basically instead of upstarting and trying to draw your extra ignites you're actually just getting your extra ignites it sounds really really logical if you like think of it in that method a lot of my mindset like a lot of the things that I have in my mindset are very hard for me to actually explain because it makes perfect sense to me in my head but then I, I just can't put it into words if that makes sense but it's just like why would you play upstart to try and draw into more combo pieces when you're not already playing the maximum amount of combo pieces that you have available to you. I, that's probably the easiest way that I can explain it, is that if you're not playing Summoner's Art, there's no reason for you to be playing Upstart, because if you're playing Upstart, that means you were trying to draw into more of these Ignite cards, but you could have just been playing more of the Ignite cards. Um, because there's, like, what are you trying to Upstart into? Are you trying to Upstart into the one Tyrant, one, you know, Tyrant's Throws that you're trying to draw? Like, it doesn't actually make any sense on paper, and also, there's just other merits as to not why did you shouldn't play Upstart Goblin right now. Um, people are actually, like, paying a lot of life now. If they're playing the Solemn cards, if they're playing, like, Clowns, they burn themselves with Trick Clown, burn themselves with Instant Fusion, that just makes it easier for you to kill them. And so, if they're going to be willing to burn themselves down in life, then there's absolutely no reason why... I should be, you know, get playing cards that give that back to them, if that makes sense. Um, that's actually just a very real mindset that I have for playing games in general going forward at this current point in time. But, carrying on. I'm going to cut Draco uh, face off to two. Now, I'm completely leaving these cards in here. And even though you may be saying to yourself, why? Why would you leave these cards in? They, you know, if you put Lester Pendulum in your scale, that sucks, right? We just had this conversation. The issue is, is that this actually is a lot better than you think it is, even if you never put it in the scale. The fact that it's a tuner is a very good, and the fact that it's a pendulum is very good. And the fact that Vector is a 3 is actually just the perfect number for this deck. The reason that Draco Faceoff is being cut to 2 is simply to keep the deck at 40 cards, and I don't want to cut Instant Fusion because that card, even though it's at a 1 of, I'm, I wish that I could play more of it, but there's no room in this deck for it. Um, and you don't really need it as long as you're like keeping your resource management up, which we'll address with a different card in the extra deck. But um, even having this as a two of, it's just really good for reasons other than what you're thinking of. This card, every time you activate it, 
is guaranteed to put Luster Pendulum into circulation as a tuner. It doesn't matter which monster they pick. If they pick the Luster Pendulum at random, you can special summon it. If they pick the Vector Pendulum, the Luster goes into your extra deck to be Pendulum summoned. If they pick the Luster Pendulum at random, like, you get the choice. So there's 100% guaranteed going to be a Luster Pendulum as a tuner in circulation for you. That is very powerful, especially in this deck, considering that this deck doesn't have a lot of way to clear threats, but Ignister is very good at clearing threats. And the other reason is that it is a spell card that will always put two monsters into circulation or complete your scale if you need it. Vector being a three scale is extremely real. It's extremely real because the entire point of your deck is to pendulum summon monsters between the levels of four and six. So even though the Ignite scale goes from two to seven, that's because it has to work with its threes, but we're not playing the level threes in this build. Vector pendulum with an Ignite seven scale can pendulum everything. So even if you're missing a scale, Clash of Draco Rivals can get you Vector, which is a damn good scale because it can negate your opponent's Pendulum scales. So if you're playing against Pepe or something, that's just actually just really good. But even if you're not trying to get a scale, Clash of Draco Rivals is always going to be putting two monsters into circulation if you need it to. It's going to be putting whatever monster is picked on the board because you can just special summon it for free, no issue, and then it's putting the other one face up in your extra deck that can be Pendulum summoned. Like, it's actually just really good. Um, it's really good in that regard. So that's why this whole package is staying in, even though you will literally never be putting Luster Pendulum in your Pendulum Scale. The only time you will ever be putting Luster Pendulum in your Pendulum Scale is if literally the only cards you were trying to summon for the rest of the game are these five level six monsters. If something in the world of Yu-Gi-Oh! happens and you somehow don't have access to any of these cards for the rest of the game, then yes, absolutely. Put Luster Pendulum in your scale. But other than that, this card is never going to be put in your scale. You are playing it simply because it's a tuner. It is a vanilla like the rest of these cards, but it's a tuner. And it's a Pendulum monster. And its stats aren't that bad. I mean, 1850 is actually pretty decent for a monster that just comes back every time it dies. But anyway, moving on. That is the, that is the main deck as it stands. The extra deck is going to get quite a little bit of work. First thing is Dino Stir. Um, it's getting cut for, uh, for space reasons because you have to make a lot of room with this deck in order to play one long games and two um, to make room for the fives and sixes that you're gonna be playing now you're not gonna be playing a lot of them but the ones that you are gonna be playing are very high impact like more high impact than the rank fours that you'd be playing instead so uh, Magister is getting cut to one because there's never actually a need for two and like you're not ever going to make two the only time you ever really make one is when you're doing the uh, like Ignister OTK with like two Ignisters Magister um, that kind of thing uh, but we are putting in a Volcasaurus that is going to be the lone rank 4 or not like rank, lone rank 4 the lone rank 5 to use with these uh, these fives because I mean there's only four of them so chances of you actually having multiple of them in circulation being able to make multiple rank fives very very slim very slim chances um, but we're going to play a Gaia Charger as well simply because um, like it actually just really complements very well it lets you open up like game opportunities where they wouldn't have existed before deal with threats things like that and then there are going to be two rank sixes the two best that I can think of coming up um, in all of these situations would be strike bouncer for some effect negation and our good old friend utopia beyond because to hell with Cosmo hate that deck with a passion um, I am missing a open space Cowboy. Cowboy is 100% a card I would not consider needing when you have access to cards like these. Um, cowboy is basically that, that card like if you have a 15th slot, you put the Cowboy in, but if you don't, you don't. Um, so we're putting these in, and so this allows you know these sixes to have some use in two different areas, and then it allows these fives to open up game shots and be you know just something other than being large. Now you may be wondering why um, why the uh, sixes are stationed out are, are distributed out the way they are because there's two of these there's two gallants and then there's three veterans and you may be wondering what the hell is that about did I just pick that at random absolutely not I did not pick that at random but I just held off on explaining that be until I got past the point about vector pendulum being you know a relevant scale that you could actually get off Draco face off and the whole reason why that suite of cards is being kept um, the reason why that these are in the ratio that they are is because out of these cards, Uzi has 100% the better stats. It is a 7 scale, so it's the higher end of the scale spectrum. 
and it has 2700 defense which is big on its own but with ignition phoenix up it's 3k which is damn big you can wall for quite a while with this card um, depending on what you're doing and then ignite gallant it's got 2100 and it would go to 24 with the field spell but i mean that's not that that's not great and it's also just one of the lower scales but we don't need as many of those because we have vector pendulums to pick up the extra slack in that area so that is why it was trimmed down to two whereas the other one stayed at three i wanted to keep the numbers bigger but i just moved them around in that kind of order it was just completely subjective um to what my uh to what i thought was going to be necessary um to keep like the deck down at 40 cards because i mean you don't want to go over 40 cards with a deck like this and then like try to justify chicken games like that doesn't make sense um doesn't make sense at all but anyway back to this extra deck card that's getting cut is actually Diamond Dire. You aren't going to be making a lot of rank 4s with this deck, and Diamond Dire is actually one of those cards that you only really play it in your extra deck because it is an out to certain cards, but you could actually just play, like, there are actually different outs to cards in the extra deck, like, uh, like Infinity, uh, Castell, like, all, like, Ignister, there's so many outs to cards. Why is Diamond Dire in here? And the reason Diamond Dire is played in so many Pendulum decks, especially like Pepe, is because Diamond Dire is a card that is typically summonable before you Pendulum Summon, thus allowing you to pop a back row, clear space, clear a possible threat, and then Pendulum Summon all your resources. This deck doesn't have that luxury. This deck is very much all or nothing, which is one of the reasons why you blind first with this deck every single time. If you win the die roll, you choose to go first. And that's another reason why there's actually possible merit to play this deck, is that if we're in a format where everyone wants to go second, that means you automatically won every die roll. Because you win the die roll, you choose to go first. If they win the die roll, you go first. Great! But every single time that you can choose, you should be choosing to go first with this deck because you want to set up throws, you want to get all your pendulum resources set up, and then most importantly, you want to pendulum summon before there you want to set up your pendulum resources before there's Nat Beast, Wavering Eyes, all these factors. You want to set up throws if possible so your opponent can't play. And then you also just want to establish a big pendulum summon before there can be any traps there like you want that this deck can't play into a back row pop it and then pendulum summon this deck doesn't have that luxury so thus diamond dire doesn't really have a place in this extra deck because by the time you're pendulum summoning and doing all that nonsense you have so many other better outs than diamond dire to just one card like you could some you could play castell to out a face up threat you can summon infinity just to make the threats meaningless Ignister spins away any threat if you have Luster in circulation. You have Volcasaurus to get rid of monsters in different ways and do damage. Utopia Beyond gets over big ships, can't be targeted, shit like that. All these, all these factors align that make Diamond Dire just not really that great in this specific deck. Because, as I've already said, well, it's not that like it's impossible for you to, um, for you to, uh, which would do it. Make it be able to make a rank four before you pendulum summon, but it's extremely rare. It's literally like you normal summon Royal Magical Library, and then you Draco faced off, and you hit Vector, and you chose to special summon it. Like it's very, very few and far between when you're able to actually do that. I wonder if me tapping my mic with the back of my fingernail when I did that whole hand gesture is going to register on the audio horribly. Who knows? But cutting the Diamond Dire for a second Digesto Emerald. Now this is a card that I touched on when I was playing the games. I could easily say this. I could easily see this card being a three of even if you can justify cutting another card for a third one. This deck is all vanillas, but it's very good at cycling through its cards and fueling the extra deck. And then you use that extra deck resource to make a bunch of XCs. But if you end up playing longer games, you could easily just emerald to special summon once from grave, and then when they die, they go to the extra deck. Or you could just use Emerald in general to shuffle three of them back, draw cards, get more combo pieces, and then cycle through and get them back into circulation very quickly through the utilization of Ignition Phoenix, as well as the Ignite's own natural destruction effects to search. Like, I could easily see Double Emerald, or even Triple Emerald, being a 100% staple in this deck if anyone tried to play it competitively, because it allows you to play longer games, and it allows you to actually efficiently recoup your pendulum resource that you're losing it's probably the it's one of it's just it's a very solid card to go into off of instant fusion like there's so many ways to make it in the deck and every time you make it as long as you're able to put back the first emerald plus more pendulums 
it doesn't matter how long the game takes from that point on if you're grinding through resources whatever even though that very rarely exists in the modern game of Yu-Gi-Oh like it's very very easy for you to get into these situations if you're not playing against the top decks of the format but your deck itself is a bunch of vanillas but it's pendulums so it should inherently be able to be a little bit better than them at keeping up resources but this just allows you to never run out it's the very it's the same thing with like necros whereas like necros cycle through its resources really quickly and then you would always just double you'd always play double emerald and you would always emerald back the first emerald you summoned every single time and you would never run out of resources even though all of your plays were extremely powerful and you should be beating whatever you're playing against completely because your deck is better than theirs you can still just be out resourced in certain situations and the double emerald thing just makes it to where that's physically or the not physically but theoretically impossible but carrying on the very last thing that we have to do to this is the is finalize the side deck and I've already cut out some cards that I knew I wasn't playing and I strategically left the ones that I knew were gonna stay in here and the ones that are staying in are all of these and then combined with Dinko Sekas. Now the reason why I'm not playing anything like you know the original build had raw mode sphere uh, raw sphere mode in there um, I assume that's for like outs to like Cosmo boards as well as like Nat Beast played his King of the Fair Olympus against Pepe stuff like that I understand why it's there but like one flying C is just better but I don't really like flying C in the side deck of this either but I'm keeping it just because I don't know what I would replace it with because this is just better overall against a lot of general things but the issue with this deck, again, is that you shouldn't be allowing yourself to get Nat Beast Pleiades or whatever because you should always be choosing to go first. Any chance you have against a deck like Pepe or anything like that, or even a deck that you know is going to just be doing nonsense to you, you should always be choosing to go first. The only decks that I would choose to go second against with this deck would be something like Cosmo, but even then it has merits going first against that deck as well. Like this is probably just like one of the, probably the only Pendulum deck in the current format that's playable that is 100% perfect at going first because you have access to all of your combo cards because the deck is all combo cards. Um, so like, I, you don't want to be siding cards like Sphere Mode and stuff like that because, okay, your opponent might just choose randomly to go first. But that's, that's such an extreme outlier, and you shouldn't be citing cards with the expectation that's going to happen just because you're hoping that it'll happen. Like, most of the time, if you're playing at any event, that's not going to be happening. And that's why this video is so much longer than the rest, because even though this deck is a deck of vanillas, this deck actually has competitive chance. So, I wanted to go a little bit more depth into my card choices, a little bit more depth into everything. I completely changed the dynamic of the deck so that took time as well but as I said this was gonna be a long video and holy shit we're at like 28 minutes so we are going to be done from this point forward this is the finalized product I will definitely be doing some games playing this deck I don't know if they're gonna go live today if they don't they'll go live tomorrow this is a pretty long video so this might actually just be the only upload that goes up today's because I mean shit I can't expect y'all to watch all of this and then immediately go watch like some 15 minute long games or something like that that would just be a little bit much. But anyway, as always, guys, if you made it to the end, thanks for watching. As usual, like, comment, subscribe to all the nonsense that you normally do. Links are in the description to a background music playlist that I use, as well as links to my Facebook pages. As I already said before, if you want to suggest a deck for this little Deck Doctor segment and it's not a deck that I've already done before, then send me a deck in message form to my Facebook fan page. That is a link there. There's a link for it in the description. I always trip over my tongue for this for some reason because my mind starts working like on what I'm trying to say next, and uh, I might be dyslexic. Who knows? But click on that if you have not. I greatly appreciate it. it. Helps me make money, and it's no reason to lie to you guys about that. If you have an ad block enabled, if you could do me a favor and take a couple of sex, a couple of sex out of your day, and disable it, and then re-enable it when you're done clicking some ads, that would really help me out. It's a great way to show your support of the things I'm doing and a great way to just show how much you like the content I'm doing. It definitely motivates me to want to make more of these videos if it's stuff that you like and I see that it just makes more money than the rest of the videos because it's basically just the the most reliable YouTube demographic. YouTube gives me all these charts and demographics and stuff. It's like, oh, this video has this many minutes watched. This many video has this many likes compared to this one. Yada, yada, yada. But then like it just shows me like, oh, this video made 
this much money, and this video made this much money. It's like, I'm making more of that type of video. That's what we're doing. But, I mean, that should be obvious. But, other than that, that is all for this video. 30 Minute Deck Doctor, let's go. As always, guys, I have been your host, Phoenix, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care.